Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Zero for Hire, and I am coming to you live from my extremely loud microphone. Is that a little bit better? Okay, yeah, that looks good. I am the creator of The Last Day Comic, and I want to talk to you today about a question that somebody posted online and I have an answer to. So I want to help out the comic book indie comic community as much as I possibly can. I'd love to add and to you know give and make more positive things and so in doing that i want to be able to answer questions in a positive way and help out so this is uh callie tines and callie writes i want to write a manga but i'm not sure how to go about it like the one i'm reading vampire game something something because i can't draw to save my life so callie a couple of things to to keep in mind there this is a long road it's going to be a marathon it's not a sprint uh there are two two ways to go about doing this that i know of personally one you can learn how to draw and then once you learn how to draw then you can move on to the stuff that i'm going to tell you about but if you're not one who wants to learn how to draw and you're more interested in writing stories then you can take the route that i took because that's where I'm finding the most gains. When I was in high school, I could draw, but I could never draw as well as this. So when you look at these drawings, it's amazing. I can't draw like this. I hired an artist. My artist is amazing. And um, yeah, she's the reason why this looks as good as it is. Now the story will be as good as it is because of how I wrote it. Marketing, stuff like that. I have to learn to handle those things. And generally when you're an artist, you don't know how to write a good story. You don't know how to do marketing. You don't know how to put together websites and stuff like that. And even if you do, you know, uh, personality types that make for good art doesn't normally go along with other good business skills. So part of a team now. So that's what we're going to talk about today. The first thing is I would suggest going to celltex.com. Now you don't have to use celltex. You could do this on your average writing program, but without really knowing what you're doing, it's a little bit harder. I think that using cell text is really good for this process. I also have another uh, program called Comic Life 2, but Comic Life 2 or Comic Life 3 or whatever, it, I haven't used it in any professional capacity. I think it's good for mocking up a comic once you get some stuff. And even then, I haven't really been able to use the program. I bought it for like 60 bucks or something. And I haven't really used it in any professional capacity, but it's supposed to help you be able to put together comic books. So there's that option, Comic Life, and then this is Cell Text. This is a script writing. So for $14.99 a month, you can get started. And yes, that's a little bit expensive, but let's say you want Adobe Photoshop or you want uh, some filmmaking program. I mean, you're going to be spending around the same. And so you're going to have to be serious about writing in order to make that commitment. So after you have that you can start to write your script so i want to give you um this is page 10 of my script from the comic that i'm working on and so what i'll do is i'll kind of walk you through the process of what writing a script looks like this is how i learned and this is what's been working for me now there are variations to writing scripts so you'll see this is page 10 i have that highlighted because it's easy for the eyes and then in panel one, you describe what's happening in panel one. It's a wide shot of a dimly lit room in the foreground. So what I didn't realize is a new technique. So it says in the foreground, you can just put FG in capital letters, like how you have panel one. And you can put BG for background. I just recently read a script that was utilizing that method. So that was, that's some shorthand that can help you. So Silas stands awkwardly while Steve gestures for him to take a seat. And then in panel one, because I haven't dictated that we've moved on to panel two yet, in panel one, it says, Steve, he's saying, please, Mr. Lang, have a seat. And then Silas is overacting. He says, yes, I will sit down. Then in panel two, Silas hesitantly takes a seat in the arcade chair while Steve stands behind him, adjusting the futuristic looking helmet on Silas's head. And in that panel, you will also see sound effects and computer noises some sort of onomatopoeia for that. Panel three, a close-up of Silas' face, his expression stern, or Steve's face. And he says to Silas, knock it off, you're gonna get us in trouble. So this is a conversation between two people that is happening. Now, in the, in the artist's note, 
One thing that I got hung up with one time was writing the conversation and just saying, saying this, and you might, it can be difficult depending on who you're working with. So here in the artist notes, the camera pans between Silas's worried face, Steve's hands flicking switches and Steve talking. So you want the you want the action to be between Silas's face, Steve's face, and Steve's hands as he's working on the computer. Silas is looking back over as best as he can, but the restrictive chair keeps him from moving. This this should give you some indication of their positioning in the room. And then the camera pans back and forth between Silas's face, Steve's hand. I said that once. I, I don't know why I did it twice, but yeah, I do that sometimes. And this is in red so that the artist knows that this isn't part of the script, but this is something that the artist needs to take note of. That's why it's red. Now, let's look at this as it's acted out on page 10 and page 11. So, you know, it's just dialogue, and here's what's happening. Panel 2, a close-up of Silas's face, hesitant, um, epic, length of time. And you have one where he raises an eyebrow, talks about difficulty letter, Silas interrupts his own, expert, you know how I roll. Steve, Steve tries to stop him, tries to warn him. Expert, he interrupts. Now, this is all describing the flow of the conversation, going back, giving things like a smug victory, you know, um, sudden comedic defeat and slight embarrassment, his expression, you know. These are things that we want baked into the picture, but to read it this way would definitely slow it down. So, go back up to page 10, and we can look at this in illustrative Illust illustrative form illustrated so there we go this is all in the background you see silas walking up to the chair while steve gestures please have a seat yes i will sit down and then steve buckles him in and then you see his face knock it off you're gonna get us in trouble so he's looking back at steve while he talks steve is working steve can look back at him and they're kind of having their conversation back and forth so that little red artist note told the artist where their position is in the room and then the artist looked at some other references that I sent so we have the design of the room we have the computer consoles that's all set let's move to the next picture so you have him sitting here talking and then you see Silas's face and then you see Steve's hands and then you see the computer and then you see, you see like a medium shot of the both of them talking and then Silas's face Steve's face they're looking back and forth He's looking over his shoulder, he gets interrupted, expert, but the whole time you see the movement of the camera from different angles looking at their faces while while not, you don't lose track of where they are in the page. So this is good story, this is really good visual storytelling on the part of the artist, but just using those notes that I gave them, this is what they're doing, this is how I want them to be talking, and then you enter the lines and panel one this happens in panel two this happens in panel three this happens let's go back to the script let's uh let's see page 12 we are looked at page 12 13 expert it is then okay uh, so this is this this is the the famous page that i'm showing uh with the troll and this is like one of my promo pages so you have so this is a wide shot of the forest, heavy brush. Silas is walking with his hand on his wound on his abdomen. He's looking at battle worn and dirty. He's wearing his power vest and a pair of gauntlets. And then Silas's face snaps. You see a twig behind him. So this is a close up on his face when you hear the snap of the twig behind him. And he's, he's thinking, huh? Out jumps a giant troll. Roar! Silas jumps to the side, dodges the attack. It's you again. The troll swings his massive fist at Silas. Roar! Silas dodges the blow and narrowly avoiding the attack. Ah, leave me alone. I don't want to play with you anymore. Let's look at that in its illustrated form. So Silas is in the in the forest, walking by himself, holding his abdomen. He hears a snap, looks over his shoulder. Roar, the monster jumps out. You again. He swings at Silas. Silas dodges. Just leave me alone. You see his massive fist slamming into the ground. So with all that this, this description, the artist knows exactly what to draw. And then it's up to the artist to kind of put pen to paper and make it work. That's the that's the flow between the writer and the artist. So that is one way for certain that you can do this and you can do it pretty easily. Now, how do you get your script? Well, I told you about Celtex. It's a program. There's a little bit of a learning curve, but there's videos out there. But one thing that I do 
personally is I will do what's called an outline. And so I'll just write an outline here and these dots, and this is what I do. So I'll just say guy, okay, I can't type because every time I hit the S key, that music starts. But um, what I would do is I would say guy enters the car and then I'll hit enter and then it'll be like guy puts the key in the ignition and then another line. He says this to himself or he thinks this to himself and then the next line and you just write things happening in the scene and then from here you start to break it down. Okay, so this would be panel one. Maybe he can think to himself. So you put all that stuff in panel one that you want and then you move on to panel two and then you start describing what happens there. Without an outline, you can't write a script. So you turn your outline into like a story and then you break that story down into panels and angles and what's happening in each panel and eventually as you start to extrapolate on that you'll have a script uh, and it's a good idea to have someone look at it and make sure it makes sense and that's that's script writing 101 i think um it, it can be a lot of fun it can be really frustrating especially when you end up with you know parts in the script that don't make sense or parts in the script that don't tie into things, which is why you want to write it as a story first. Make sure that your elements are together. Make sure you keep track of all the things that are going on. And then you, if you have special details, you need to write in red. You know, Faceless Young Maiden is the AI that runs the program. That, that's something that the artist needs to know before they start drawing. Otherwise, they might just draw anything. So these are all uh, good things to re recognize, good things to note. I'll, and I'll give you an, an example of consistency here. So I said that the that the faceless young maiden is the AI that runs the program. So what that means for me is that later in the story, we need to make sure that she has this hair. This is what her hair needs to look like when we start working on that character, because this is what it looks like in the beginning of the book. Now, if I if I make if I said this is the AI and I present this to the reader, as the AI that, that creates all these dreams and things. And then later in the book, she has short spiky hair that, that's, that doesn't make any sense. It's inconsistent. So those are the types of things you need to be paying attention to when you're writing your script. So uh, those are all the tips that I have. I hope that that works out for you. And uh, I hope that this helps you get on your way. Um, feel free to tag me in any script stuff that you work on or any examples that you have that you wanna share. I always love to see people growing in their craft and this is a lot of fun. This is why we do this and I hope I was helpful. So that's it for now. I'll talk to you guys on the next one.